Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. BMW is developing components for a hydrogen fuel cell powered vehicle. Irma Fenter joins me to discuss BMW's plans in this regard. Hi Irma. Hello Chanel. When does BMW expect to produce the first hydrogen fuel cell powered vehicle? They're working hard at the components at the moment. Um, BMW is of course in a joint venture with Toyota to to as a corporation agreement to work together on a hydrogen vehicle. Toyota's vehicle is already on the road, the Mirai, um, but BMW is trying to push some more performance out of the components. Uh, of course, a BMW customer, they say, would demand a bit more performance than perhaps a Toyota customer. So they're trying to get uh, more out of the components and they're working on getting all of these components ready for a market launch car in around 2020-ish. That's the words of Dr. Merton Young, his head of fuel cell development at BMW. How do these vehicles compare to those with internal combustion engines or electric vehicles? Internal combustion engines are the familiar vehicles you and I see on the road every day. They use fuel like petrol or diesel. Then we've got the electric vehicle. Um, that's even become more familiar to us. We see these on the roads uh, already, as such as the LEAF or the BMW i3. You plug in this vehicle, you power the battery. Um, inside this vehicle, you get a big battery, typically a lithium ion battery. And this is the source for electric power to drive the vehicle. In hydrogen vehicles, you get a fuel cell or a hydrogen fuel tank, and you fill up this fuel tank with hydrogen, and then this is converted into electric power to drive the vehicle. At the moment, there's um, still some costs, problems with um, fuel cell vehicles, as with electric vehicles. It's still very expensive. It is not mass produced, so um, you don't have economies of scale to bring down the cost of these vehicles. There's also a weight problem, as similar to electric vehicles. So it's a very bulky, a fuel cell is a heavier, bulky making the efficiency of that vehicle not as efficient as, for example, an internal combustion engine. So these are all things that BMW is trying to work on and all other manufacturers also trying to develop um, fuel cell vehicles. What are the infrastructure requirements that are needed for these vehicles? Well, other than an electric vehicle where you actually plug in the car to drive its range for about 150 k's or whatever, you actually have to fill up the a hydrogen car with hydrogen. It's got a hydrogen fuel tank and you fill up this car. You could do that in a, in a similar way that you will fill up a normal internal combustion engine with a car with uh, petrol or with diesel. So what you would need is you would need a filling station with a specific fuel pump designed f to fill up a vehicle up with hydrogen. And as a hydrogen vehicle has a range of about 500 kilometers, you can actually use the existing infrastructure that you have for fuel or diesel cars, just and add a hydrogen component to that and then fill up these vehicles with hydrogen. So you don't need those special nooks and crannies and, and little parking spaces to actually um, charge an electric vehicles. It's also much quicker to refill a hydrogen vehicle. It takes about four to five minutes. An electric vehicle, of course, to charge, to full charge, can take um, anything from uh, a few hours. I mean, you're talking about overnight most basically for electric vehicles to charge full. So you you have hydrogen vehicles that if if BMW and other manufacturers also can just get this right, you can actually just add on the hydrogen part to a fuel station and put these across a country or across the country and then you can just use the hydrogen vehicle as you would use a normal internal combustion engine without the special need for electric charging stations like you have with electric vehicles. Electric vehicles are more expensive than those with internal combustion engines. How do the cost of the hydrogen fuel cell powered vehicles compare? Well, like, like we noted, it is more expensive because we don't have economies of scale yet, so it's not mass produced. But of course that time will come if development um, happens as it should. So with electric vehicles, for example, BMW is targeting the urban market. You will only travel short distances with this car at 150 kilometers an hour. So you can, as the bat battery develops and becomes better and better, you can curb the cost of that electric vehicle, for example, and make it cheaper because you only want to travel that far as battery efficiency improves. With a hydrogen vehicle, what you would need to do is you would typically look at this vehicle to travel further distances, 500 to 600 kilometers, a heavier, bigger vehicle, not a small urban run around electric vehicle, but a bigger vehicle that you want to travel distance, further distances with. And as you develop this car, and as you develop the fuel cell, and as you develop everything around it, you can also reach economies of scale on this specific vehicle. Um, so cost-wise, we don't know exactly what the cost is of this will be. The Mirai, Toyota Mirai, is the hydrogen vehicle that Toyota is selling in Japan. In 2014 prices, that um, retailed for about more than 700,000 Rand. Of course, these vehicles are heavily subsidized in markets abroad. 
uh, as electric vehicles are as well. So you don't really have a feeling for what the real price of this vehicle will be. We'll have to wait until BMW produces the vehicle post-2020 and we see what the cost of this is. At the moment, there's no price on the um, BMW 5 Series GT prototype fuel cell vehicle. So it's all a little bit of a game of wait and see, see how these components develop, see how you could bring down the cost of these components and then see what the demand is and what economies of scale you can get from this vehicle as you, as you roll it out into the market. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.